Republicans in Iowa overwhelmingly chose Donald Trump as the person they want to see as the Republican presidential nominee in Monday's caucus. The question for those other Republicans is how long they can sustain campaigns without making major inroads into Donald Trump's now demonstrated front runner status. For Nikki Haley, a second place finish in Iowa might have helped propel her into New Hampshire, where she's shown to be polling within 15 points of Trump. But finishing just behind DeSantis may not be enough to energize voters or donors. And for DeSantis, a win over Haley of a little more than two percentage points was enough for him to claim a victory of sorts. But the question for him is, where is the state that he might have a legitimate chance to beat Trump in a primary? And like Haley, how long he can fund a campaign where the front runner is winning by more than 50% of the total vote. With most of the votes counted, Trump is shown with 51% of the vote in Iowa, while DeSantis received 21.2, Haley was at 19.1%. DeSantis and Haley have to make some decisions about New Hampshire, South Carolina, where Haley was governor but is pulling well behind Trump, and other early states like Michigan. But as we told you yesterday, with only a small portion of Republican delegates selected in the primary in Michigan and the majority in caucuses later in the week, it's not clear that either one of them have the organization to counter Trump's grassroots when it comes to showing up and voting at party-sponsored events. If there is one potential bright spot for the Republicans still entertaining the idea of becoming the party's presidential nominee, it's that despite a very strong showing and strong polling in upcoming states, nearly 50 percent of the Republicans who ventured out in sub-freezing weather to vote in Iowa Monday wanted someone other than Donald Trump. Problem for them is they apparently can't agree on one candidate to take him on head to head.